we need to fold this card in half. And when we fold in the card in half with this method of texturing, we preserve the texture coordinates, the projection of the textures onto the geometry the way it is by adding another edit poly modifier on top. So let's do that. Another edit poly on top. Now as you can see, we have a few edit polys and we might not know what each one does. So let's rename some of these modifiers. Here, right click, edit poly. I like to add a little, a little word about what it does. This is going to be the material ID layer. And this one down here is the geometry. This is the edit poly that we used to cut it in half. So we just connected. We use the connect function to connect these uh, edges together. So now up top here, we're going to use this edit poly to fold. Here, select your edges, and it looks like it's automatically selected it for us, but in case you don't, you can go back to your selection tool, because right now we're in our move tool. Go back to our selection tool. If it were deselected, we can select it, we can double click, and that will uh, select the continuous edge that runs around the entire piece of geometry. Or you could do something like select this area, all of these edges together, hold alt and deselect these other aspects. There's a lot of different ways to do these things and you'll find the way that works best for you. Uh, but with this edge, we, we could just take it and yank it up and hey, that's starting to bend but things are starting to get a little deformed. The dryad is getting taller, the textures are getting stretched. So let's not do it that way. We're going to bend the card. We're going to need to make a little, a few more edges around this uh, folded seam area. So it doesn't look, it doesn't look like a sharp ridge like that. A fold, even on a card like this is a smooth rounded edge and you want that to reflect in your 3D model itself. So we have this edge selected and we go into our edit edges and we chamfer. So with chamfer, uh, I usually like to go into the settings first. If you select this button, it turns it into a tool that your cursor adopts and you can by hand chamfer it, but that's a that's hard to control. I'm, the way I work, I like to stay in control as much as possible. So I'm gonna right click and get out of that option. Right click again to get out of the chamfer tool and just be sure that I didn't change any geometry. Great. Uh, I'm going to double click this edge, make sure it's all selected and I'm going to go into chamfer settings and a little window is gonna pop up, a little dialog is going to pop up, and I can control the amount that's being chamfered. Now this is a very small card, so we're going to do a small amount, 0 0.01 inch. Let's try that. That looks like, that looks good. You'll see why we're trying to add more edges, is so that we can create a smoother transition to the other side of the card. Let's make this a little bigger. We can make this 0 0.02, and We'll make it up to 0 0.03, I would say one more, one more, 0 0.04. There we go. We're going to add a segment to it so that it splits it like this. You could add more if you'd like, that would create an even smoother transition, but more geometry is harder to, to manipulate. So keep that in mind. We're going very simple here, so let's keep this down to two segments. Alrighty, once, you're, once it looks good to you, press OK, and you now have more segments added to it without upsetting the, G, the texturing that's going on here. Now, if you did start moving things around, you would start to change the texture setup that you had done, so avoid manipulating these edges as much as possible, and only in very particular ways, which you'll get a hang of over time. Now let's get out of our edit poly modifier and we'll go back to being able to manipulate the card itself. We're going to turn this card 90 degrees so that's standing so that we can bend this card inwards. 
Now, how do we do that? This edit poly modifier that we had was used. We're going to keep this edit poly as the, as it will also contain the modifications that we made to the geometry, not just adding the segments at the center, but it's going to contain the turn modifications that we're going to make. So from here, we're going to, once again, select the polygons. We want to turn these poly, these faces inwards. Now, when we do this, it's going to get a little weird, strange. We're going to break this geometry if we do it this way. We want a smooth turning transition. Now, to do that, we need to somehow apply these translations in a smooth way so that if we move this face this way, the other faces will follow in a smoother sort of set, which can be accomplished by a particular mode called soft selection here in the edit poly modifier. So if we scroll down, we can see the soft selection, turn that on, and you can't really tell what's happened here. These edges seem to have changed colors, but that's because the fall off if you think of a gradient of selection, the fall off is really huge. And so uh, it's gone way too far than what we need. We're working with a small object here. So how about we start with zero and let's start moving upwards. You can see that the edges are taking on different colors to signify the amount of influence that's happening to them. And as you can see, it starts off with blue. White, of course, is zero influence in the transformation. Blue is the lowest. And as we approach orange and red, we have the highest amount of influence for this. So from this, we can, if we translate it, you can see that that transformation is much smoother. This is exactly what we need for turning this card inwards. Now, uh, when we do make these adjustments, be sure that you have your lock soft selection on because as you make adjustments, the soft selection changes. So let's undo that. And once we turn lock soft selection on, the selection remains. We have a perfect soft selection made for what we need. Let's start turning this card inwards. So this will preserve the card's face so that it doesn't stretch to, though these other aspects will stretch a little bit. We're going to turn it and we're going to drop it over here. So now it looks like the card has been folded. We're going to make a closer fold. Wonderful. Now, this looks like a natural fold. Maybe tilt it up just a little bit. Perfect. We've made this card. Pretty simple. Now, let's turn the soft selection off. And one thing that you'll learn about geometry is that when you see these little pinches that are happening here, that can cause problems in rendering. So go back into your edit poly we're going to find that edge that's starting to pinch inward. And we can see it right underneath. We're going to select it and we're just going to give it a little more breathing room. Same is true maybe with this inside edge. Just adjust it so it has a little more breathing room. And as you can see, we're, we're only translating these edges in the Z and X axis. If you start moving with that center box, it could be, it could go in odd directions. So be sure you isolate to the axis that you need. All right, well, this looks nice. This is our card. Pretty easy, isn't it? Let's place this into 3D space in a something that's more usable. So I'll bring it up to this grid floor here. I'm gonna press Alt W to look at our card in alternative orthographic projections. We're gonna go look at it from the left side. So I'm going to hover over my left side panel here. I'm gonna press Alt W and I'm going to move this 
so that it sits sort of in the center of how I'd like it to be. Uh, we're going to go into rotate and we're going to lay this flat. Or actually I moved it before thinking about that. So there, now it looks like it's standing perfectly. Great, we have our first modeled card.